Okay, so getting into it, there's a couple different ways that you can base coat pieces. And basically what that is, is when you have a blank piece of bisque, I'm going to pick up one. When you have a blank piece of bisque, bisque is really porous, so it sucks in the color. So if you try uh, painting with your color right away, your, your color ends up blotchy and you end up hating life because your, your piece isn't coming out, the, the colors aren't blending, and you don't have time to move the paint around, and you just end up hating life. So we always, ba we always tell people base coat your pieces before you start with your color. There's a couple different ways to base coat. Um, one is a pre-made base coat that you can get from Fashion Hues. And of course the um, words are going to be backwards because of the way the screen works. Um, but you can uh, base coat with Fashion Hues cream base coat and Fashion Hues white base coat. And what they recommend is to do two coats of the base coat either two coats of cream or two coats of white or a coat of cream and a coat of white. You can also, and then that helps fashion hues, colors blend and go on more smoothly. It's made to work with the fashion hue colors, but it can work with other paints as well. Then there is just straight up using craft paints, whatever brand you want. Um, this is a brand from a store that actually went out of business, so you can't get this one anymore. Um, but the store was bought by uh, Michael's Crafts, so Michael's Crafts brand is probably what this brand was. Um, but again, just a cream and a white, one coat of each color or two coats of one color, whichever you prefer. I usually recommend doing a base coat of cream because if you're painting cream on white you can see if you've missed and then doing a base coat of white because again if you're painting white on cream you can see if you've missed because you want to make sure that you have base coated your entire piece um, so those are the tried and true everybody knows about those now I found a new secret recipe it is am amazingly easy and you only have to do one coat after you have your thing made. Um, this is using Mod Podge. Mod Podge. I have recently found out that Mod Podge is not the same thing as adding water to school glue. Yes, adding water to school glue makes decoupage, but it does not make Mod Podge. Mod Podge actually has like a, a varnish sealant in it. Um, hi Marla, uh, thanks for saying hi. I'm seeing some comments, so maybe this is working a little bit. Um, so yeah, um, but Mod Podge Matte is what you want. And then you're going to take some black acrylic paint. So Mod Podge Matte and black acrylic paint. You're going to open up your Mod Podge. I'm not going to do it to this one because I already made some and I don't want to over make it and get too far ahead of myself on, on supplies. Um, but you'll open up your Mod Podge. There'll be enough room to add the amount of paint that you need to in the bottle. I'm going to go ahead and do it to this one that I already have done. But you basically just add in. Oh, and this big bottle of acrylic black. It's a four ounce bottle, I believe. Yeah, four ounce bottle. I got this from the Dollar Tree. Four ounce bottle of acrylic black from the Dollar Tree for a dollar. It makes it no more expensive for cheaper than buying the 50 cent bottles at Walmart. Um, and I know there's lots of ladies out there, ladies and gentlemen, in the ceramic world that are saying, you know, make sure you buy ceramic made paints and because it is a better quality. Absolutely, it is a better quality. But if you can't afford that, don't let that stop you. Go ahead and buy the cheap stuff from, uh, from Walmart or a little bit more expensive at 
at Joanne Fabrics because that's what you can afford. Just start doing this and eventually you'll be able to get to a point where you're like, you know what, I'm going to splurge on myself a little bit and I'm going to buy the Mako Softies or the Doc Holidays or um, the Donna's Stains or the Fashion Hue Translucents. Um, oh, and after you've put the paint in, you put the put the lid back on and give it a really good shake. You're going to shake for a long time because you need to mix up that black into all of the Mod Podge. Um, but just get started. Buy the cheap stuff if you need to. And don't be afraid. The cheap stuff will actually still look good. Um, you might need to do a, a coat or two more um, than, than what the good stuff will do. You, you can tell a little bit of a difference. Like if you have been in it for a long time, you can tell the difference between uh, uh, the cheap paint and the paint that's made for ceramics. You'll be able to tell the difference after a while. Um, but don't let that stop you from getting started. Uh, and some people, you know, you don't have a, a place that's close enough to make it um, affordable to either go and get it or to have it shipped in. So, you know, don't be afraid. Um, but once you get this good and mixed, and you'll you'll be able to see it starting. You'll be able to see it starting to mix by looking through the bottle, and you'll see it mixing. And you want it to be kind of a dark gray to almost a black. So here is what it looks like once it's all mixed up. And then you will just paint this on, and that's your base coat. You. you cut out a whole step. You don't have to do two coats of something and wait for two coats to dry. Because in between coats you have to wait for it to dry. So you can do this. It doesn't take long to dry. Once it's dry you're ready to start painting. Um, then the other thing is a, a color wash or an antiquing, whichever you want to call it. I'm going to turn the camera down so that it's facing my workbench so you guys can actually see it. The color wash I'm going to show you step by step because I already have one made. This is a black wash um, that I really made a mistake on and I kind of want you guys to sort of see the um, after effects of the mistake. It was hilarious. Um, but I'm going to kind of make a reddish brown wash tonight. And I'll step you through that. And then after this, I will kind of go through the pieces that we're going to be painting for the Haunted Village. Um, I'm going to go over some craft materials that you might want to start collecting so that you're ready to do this if you want to work along with us. Um, and I tried to make sure that everything that I got was either easily purchased at like a big box store like Walmart or the the Dollar Tree or like um, um, Dollar General, um, Family Dollar, those kind of places. I tried to make sure that anything I got was easily and readily accessible across the board. Um, so, okay, I'm going to turn the camera down now so that you guys aren't looking at me and you'll be looking at my beautiful mess. Okay. Ah, what are you doing? My camera thinks I'm rotating it. There we go. Okay. I don't know if you guys could see all this splatter. Last night when I made my practice batch of ant antiquing wash solution, um, I, I, I did a bit too much. And when I opened the bottle, it sprayed all over here. It sprayed up onto the wall behind me. I was a complete and utter mess. Um... And then I also realized after all that, I had my paper on the wrong side. This is the flat side of the freezer paper. I normally try to work on the glossy, waxy side of the freezer paper because things don't stick to the glossy, waxy side. Okay, so for a wash or a antiquing solution, whatever you guys want to call it, you're going to need some water 
and I went ahead and got distilled just so I didn't have gunk floating around in my water. You're going to think this is very, very weird, but jet dry, jet dry finish, or finish jet dry, whichever way you want to say it. The rinse aid. Some paint of color of your choice. Um, most people do, do black or a really dark brown for their antiquing solution or their washes and a bottle to put it in. This is a bottle that I got in a two pack from the Dollar Tree. So it's, it's you know, again, affordable. And take that lid off. This is gonna be mind blowing, just absolutely mind blowing. So you're going to pour in about 50% water Okay. I just dropped that lid. Oh well, it can stay there. And then just enough finish. You want to be careful with this. This is the part that I messed up on. I put too much finish in there. I don't know if you guys can see it. Well, of course you can't see it because I don't have it on the screen. Okay, but you just want it just barely tinted blue. Okay. If you do too much finish, when you go to shake it up and you go to open your lid, the, the bubbles that the finish creates cause pressure and you end up with a, a splurting, exploding can of paint wash. So just a little bit and then I'm going to put the lid on and just kind of give it a good swirl to make sure it's in there. Now the reason why you're using the finish, it's um, a flow aid. It helps things flow better. Um, you can use, if you don't have finish for your dishwasher, if there's another brand that you have, you can use that. You can use uh, a couple drops of dish soap. You can use um, Flow, uh, from the from the craft stores, Liquitex Flow Aid, um, but that's a little bit more expensive. Um, there was one other. Oh, um, Pledge Floor Care. Floor Care. You can use that as well as a Flow Aid. But this is just to kind of help the the paint and the color go over your your product your project at the end, and then you'll take your paint color of choice and you'll pour in that is probably not going to be enough but we'll see and then you kind of shake it up see all those bubbles in there that's what I was talking about that is creating pressure in this bottle and if I'm not careful it's going to explode so, kind of like tapping down a a Coke can. I'm trying to release the pressure slowly. Okay, I think we're good. All right. I need a paintbrush. Oh, that's too big. There we go. This one will work. Now I'm going to just kind of test out the color. Alright, I want just a little bit more red in there. That was probably a lot more red, but that's okay. And I'm going to darken it up just a little bit more, so I'm just going to put a drop of black paint in there. And now I'm going to mix it up again. Oh, you can feel when you're when you're shaking it, you can feel the pressure building up in there from the flow aid. So be careful. And I'm going to let that sit for a minute. 
Okay, while that's sitting, because I don't want to have this spraying all over my camera or all over my wall again, I'm going to go over um, some of the craft items that you might want to think about buying if you're wanting to craft along with me in these next couple of videos, next couple of weeks. From the dollar store, Dollar Tree, floral moss, and or Spanish moss. If you can still find these decorative moss packages, it says decorative moss, it's got some of the greener moss with some of the um, pine cones and little pieces of mushrooms. Um, I have this, I don't know if I'm actually going to use any of it, but I have it. Um, I will be using the, mo the two different mosses um, in a couple of projects. So mosses, and I went with the I went with the more brown instead of the really bright green because we are doing Halloween. Um, so I, I want to keep it kind of decrepit. I'm not going to be doing too uh, funny or cutesy of a Halloween. Um, I like the dark, darker side of haunted towns and, and, and things, so that's kind of what I'll be going with, is a more of the um, abandoned ghost town, there's legends about the town and, and all this other stuff. Um, there's going to be one piece of whimsy in it really that I, I I'll explain when I show it to you um, so okay some of the pressure has come down in the bottle so I'm gonna try opening it go real slow see it's it's splurting but again the uh, finish is for the flow aid so that when you're painting it on your piece it will kind of run and get into all of the nooks and crannies. Okay, I like that color much better. Um, so if you want to have these made and ready to go, you'll need a bottle, you'll need water, you'll need some sort of flow aid. So jet dry finish or finish jet dry, however you want to say that name. Um, pledge floor care. Uh, a couple drops of dish soap something to that effect is just to help keep the paint moving as it's going over and filling into the nooks and crannies of your piece um, that would be one thing that you'll want to have made up um, black and uh, reddish brown is what I'm going to be using you can use whatever color you want as a wash um, this reddish brown, just so you know, was red iron oxide from Delta Ceramic Coat. The black was Nicole's black. Or Acrology Premium Acrylic Paint Black from Dollar Tree. These ones are a little harder to find at Dollar Trees. You kind of have to go to a bigger Dollar Tree to get this size. Um, it's about the only size that's worth spending a dollar on because all the other ones are smaller than either, they're either a three ounce or a one point something ounce. And if you're gonna be spending a dollar, you might as well go to Walmart and get two bottles for 50 cents, okay? Then the Mod Podge. Mod Podge you can get at Dollar Tree, but for three cents less, you can go to Walmart and get the exact same size. So it's up to you. If you're already at Dollar Tree buying some stuff, Throw in some Mod Podge because you're going to spend more than three cents in time and gas to get to a Walmart to, to, to get the Mod Podge. So get it at whatever place you're at. Not a big deal. Okay? And you want matte. You want to make sure it's the yellow label that says matte. You don't want the glossy for your base coat. Okay, so back to the craft supplies. Unless anybody has questions for me. I think my, I think my comments are showing up but I'm not 100% sure. Okay, um, at the Dollar Tree, I found this package of scrapbooking border. The reason why I got this one is because I noticed this yellow 
caution yellow caution tape I thought that might be kind of cool to, to put up on some of the buildings to make it look a little bit more derelict okay so that's why I got that set that off to the side you're gonna need some crafting wire you can this is um, wire from the Dollar Tree it comes in different colors like this gold color there's purple there's a pink doesn't matter it's a nice thick but bendable wire. You can also get the floral wire, but that's really thin, so you'll have to like um, use a whole lot more wire to get the same effects that I'm going to be getting with this wire. So this wire is over in the floral, uh, well, not exactly floral, um, the craft aisle, if, you're, if your Dollar Tree has a craft aisle, or it's in the area where the the fake birds and stuff are usually okay so craft wire some bamboo skewers got this at the Dollar Tree you can get them just about anywhere uh, Walmart I almost said Kmart I don't think anybody has Kmart's anymore but Target any place like that will will sell these and this was this was a hundred pack at the Dollar Tree. This is going to be way more than you need. So if you already have some bamboo skewers, just grab them. Um, of course, you're going to need some glue sticks for whatever size of a glue gun you have. Um, but you're also going to need some of these bigger glue sticks. This one, this glue stick is about as big around as, as a finger versus this Glue. So this is their, your mini glue stick, and the one in the package is your regular size glue stick. You're going to need some of these bigger glue sticks for one of the little off-side side projects that I'm going to show you guys that's going to be really cool as a little accent in the video, or in the village. Okay, um, the next thing is I have learned how to make stuff called flocking. Um, that's stuff that makes it look like there's actual grass growing uh, or moss growing. Um, if you want to, I'm going to do a video on how to make the flocking. Um, if you want to make it yourself, you can. Um, I think some of these things are going to be a little cost prohibitive to make just for yourself um, or time consuming. And I'm thinking that I might make some of these things in slightly bigger batches. So if you would want to order some. Uh, I'll probably have it available for you to order later on um, in the next like week or two. I got to get some of the main projects done though. But if you're going to make flock along with me, you're going to need some of this natural twine that's sold in a three pack at the Dollar Tree, or you can get it at Walmart in the craft department or over in the um, not home decor not home interior, um, hardware section, sorry, hardware section at Walmart. Um, just some natural twine. And like I said, Dollar Tree three pack for a dollar. Um, <clears throat> going to try a, a project that is um, making like a wrought iron fence to go along with some of the buildings. And you'll, you'll need some party picks. Um, the Dollar Tree has these ones. I don't know if you can see. Um, but these ones are with the, like, the pineapple decorations, the, pine, the party pineapple par stuff. And it's got ridges here, and it's, it's round at the tip. And I thought these ridges maybe kind of looked a little bit like a bone, so that might make a really cool uh, wrought iron fence look. You'll, I, we'll go into more detail about that. Or, and those ones were at the Dollar Tree. This one was just from the party section, um, at a, at, and it was a dollar as well. But these just have a little round top to them, and they're straight. Um, a different wrought iron fence maybe the most expensive craft thing 
that I'm probably going to be using is air dry modeling clay. Um, this was at Walmart. This brick is 2.2 pounds or one kilogram. Um, this it dries hard with the air so you don't have to cook it. Um, this, like I said, this was the most expensive thing that I picked up and it was $6.97. Um, we're going to make a tree. I hope. I hope. So that's some of the craft items outside of the ceramic world to go towards some of the other little projects that will just add a little bit of a flair to your your village. So let me move that there. Got to move some stuff back so I have room for a box. And I have a little bit of wet paint right here, so I don't want that transferring onto the bottom of my box. Oh my goodness. Okay. Here are the pieces that will most likely get used. There's a couple more pieces in the works. Um, this is going to be a large village. The main part of the village is the Shioto. Um, haunted village with the haunted mansion, the funeral parlor, the casket shop, and the haunted tree, and the crypt. So let me get those out. This is not working. I've got too much stuff, guys. Too much. Not enough, not enough table. And I haven't got a bigger table to do this with. It's still not a big enough table. What? Okay. So the haunted mansion. Okay, with some windows cut out and when I poured this one for myself I was in a hurry and it didn't pour properly but that's okay because it will just add to the decrepitness of everything and it'll be on the ground you won't hardly notice it then the haunted tree we cut out that side and that side so depending on your mood is how you can put the tree this side looks a little bit more scary, more mean. This one looks a little more shocked. And when you order the haunted tree from us, we don't attach the vultures so that they're easier to paint. And then when you are done painting them, you can super glue them in whatever direction on whatever branch you want. And if you don't want them on the tree at all, then you don't have to put them on. So that would be, that's, that's a nice little, Thing that I like that we don't send the vultures pre-attached because it makes it harder to paint and harder to ship it true honest okay and then of course we'll have the funeral parlor and the casket shop and again I when I poured this one, uh, I think my, my slip was too thick when I poured these two pieces and the, the casket didn't come out right. Not a big deal. I'll be able to hide that with some uh, moss or I don't know what, but we'll, we'll, get, we'll get creative on that and probably if I didn't even point it out, you guys wouldn't have even noticed. Okay, and then the other part of that same set is the crypt and the crypt when you when you pour the crypt the crypt is made with a strange slope to it because it's made to fit on the shioto base and as much as we love that base we hate it with a passion as well we love the base because the pieces fit on it beautifully and it makes a wonderful display and it's fun to paint, but oh my gosh, it is not fun to pour and it is not fun to ship. It is the hardest thing to ship and so expensive because it's so heavy. Um, and so a lot of people also don't order it because of how heavy it is to ship and because it's heavy, it costs a lot. So. When we're done painting everything, I am also going to do a base that is not at all like the Shioto base, 
but that will allow this to sit and look proper in the the scene um, and and I, I think I'm gonna get a little fancy and actually try to do um, <clears throat> plug-in lights instead of tea lights under all these because I don't want to I'm lazy I don't want to have to go turn off every single tea light under each one of these houses I want to flip a switch and turn everything off so I'm also going to try to do some electrical work not real electrical work just uh, clip lights that are in the base so that when they're plugged into a strip power outlet I could just turn off the power outlet and turn off all the houses and everything all at one time and only have to push one button then I got a little creative this is a little gazebo from a fairy village and this was actually what's called the radish gazebo it was supposed to look like a radish there was greener greenery that was up here I chopped it off and reshaped the top I thought this would look cute in with all these other houses and it's close to the right size um, then there is the um, Shioto church now please don't order this church from us because one it's not listed two we don't have the steeple I came across the mold for the church and I grabbed it and I could not find the steeple so yeah I don't have the steeple but for a haunted village I thought the steeple would have fallen in so I broke a hole and there's gonna be a, a fun project extra project that one of the bamboo skewers is gonna be used for this piece here um, I thought, well, you know, people would just think that the steeple caved in on this old abandoned church. So there's the church. Um, also, I have found a new way to do stained glass look. So on all these windows, I'm going to debut a new way to do stained glass windows. Um, and again, it's going to be one of those things where if you want to do it, I can tell you how and you can go buy it but if you're not doing a lot of stained glass windows it might be a little cost prohibitive and again that might be something that if there's enough interest you can buy it from us um, just because you could you could get a couple of pieces for your windows for a buck or two whereas buying all the supplies to make it ends up being a lot more so a little bit cost prohibitive to do your own stained glass window in this way that I'm going to be doing it. Then I figured, well, I'm going to try a couple of the Christmas houses from Shioto because they're about the same same size and it'll give me a couple more buildings in the village. Um, so the Shioto candy shop and this one, I, I didn't break the windows like you do in the, haunt, the haunted village. I just wanted to show you that a building that even though it has a Christmas tree on it um, and the candy shop, you can still paint this and accessorize this to make it fit in a Halloween village. And then also the um, Shioto Elf Workshop. I don't know if I'm going to put this one in or not, but I thought I, I might do something a little bit different to this and maybe make it a witch's house. Um, so I said that there would be one thing of whimsy in this village, and that will be this <clears throat> huge jack-o'-lantern. It's, it's only huge because when you hold it up next to one of the houses it's as big as the house um, but I am a fan of the Halloween movie from Walt Disney called Halloween Town and in Halloween Town in the middle of downtown they have a huge jack-o-lantern that sits there and, and is like the key to saving Halloween Town in the very first one I'm not gonna say anymore 
Um, but I, I was like, this is going to be my one piece of whimsy. I have to have the Halloween Town jack-o'-lantern in the middle of my town. And so I, I got this pumpkin. This pumpkin is the Bill Maher 887A pumpkin. This is a pumpkin that actually goes on like a, a walking ghost. And the ghost is holding the pumpkin. Um, kind of supposed to be like that. And it's supposed to be lit up. Um, but this was the perfect shape and look for that Halloween Town jack-o'-lantern. And then I thought, well, I need a base to put it on. So I got the Doc Holiday smoker base and I primed it for an electrical cord to go through and up here so that way my jack-o'-lantern sits on a base like so in the middle of town. So this will be my one piece of whimsy in the whole thing. Um, of course we'll have some little I, I call it trinkets so like some little pumpkins um a couple different caskets around like the caskets are a little bit too big but you know what it's okay it's make-believe so your pieces don't have to be the exact right size and then you know dracula is larger than life anyway so that's all good um, so there'll be little pieces to paint up along with that, just to kind of add some, some whimsy. There, um, when it gets closer to Halloween, where they're starting to put out some of their, some of the de decorations, I'll probably buy some little foam pumpkins to scatter through, um, and some, some different things like that, just to add a little bit more, uh, parts of interest to the village. Um, there'll also be hopefully a school building and a barn. Um, and I have a space that is, hold on, I forget. I measured. I actually measured something, guys. That's amazing. Um, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Uh, I have a space that I'm going to put all this on that measures 72 inches by 20 inches. So I have a lot of room to do these pieces on. Um, but I'll try to make sure like that the main Shioto buildings are close together so you can kind of have an idea how to do a smaller display piece than what I'm going to be doing. Um, also, when I'm building the display piece, I'm going to try to keep in mind that I want to take my Halloween village away and put in maybe a Christmas village. Um, so like I'm going to make sure that any of the Halloween type decorating I do can be covered over um, and, and be covered over with some batting for snow effect. Um, and we'll see how I how I go and how this develops and I I hope that it will be fun and interesting for everyone um, I've had fun just getting ready for it and let's see I think that's about it um, some of the ideas I, I got my idea book here um, just to kind of give you guys some ideas, I'm going to show you how to make a fire pit that flickers. Um, I'm going to tell you how, I'm going to tell, tell you, show you how to make cobwebs without having to buy that big bag of fluffy cobweb stuff that comes out at Halloween time. Um, to get a jump start on that. A little hint used dryer sheets save your used dryer sheets and I will show you how to turn those into cobwebs um, so I'm going to show you how to turn uh, dryer used dryer sheets into cobwebs I'm going to show you how hopefully how to make a wrought iron fence um, 
how to make a graveyard that fits the crypt, hopefully, um, and a fire pit that flickers, and maybe some flickering um, crystals. and a tree or two because this poor little tree can't be the only one in the whole village we need to have some other ones um just need to have a little bit more intrigue in our village and um <clears throat> i don't want to give away too much because i want you guys to come back and watch so i'm not going to tell you more about any of that stuff um, but that is about it for tonight. Um, well, actually not. I do have sort of a practice house. This was a house that when I first started pouring, I forgot to cut out the windows on the village piece. Um, so it was kind of uh, oops and i just kept it i never threw it away and so i used it to practice some of the techniques that i'm going to be showing this has been done with the mod podge base coat and this was painted with regular paints nothing fancy and done with an antiquing slash wash solution to kind of creep it all up so that's it Anne. that's so cute and a great idea also thank you Anne. that's so nice to hear um if anybody has any questions feel free to ask them now or if you're watching in the future from now and you have a question feel free to post it on to the actual video and we'll respond as soon as we see it or message us directly at Magical Mud Ceramics on Facebook and ask your question directly and we'll be happy to answer that. Um, hopefully next week I'll have a few pieces pre-painted, pre-recorded and we can sit and do a uh, watch party so that maybe I can be a little bit more proactive in responding in real time. To everyone um, sometimes if I go to look at the comments on the computer if they actually show up it I, I lose my train of thought for over on this side of things and I feel like that kind of hinders the flow so um, in the next day or two I'm gonna start doing the painting I'm gonna show how to do the um, base coat with the base coat that we made tonight um, and then go through how to paint the pieces um, I'll probably talk about doing some dry brushing I'll, I'll show you guys how to dry brush um, there are lots of other wonderful ladies out there in the ceramic world that do uh, free live shows as well and they have shown how to do dry brushing um, so kudos to them thank you to them for sharing their knowledge um, there are other places where I've picked up some dry brushing techniques they're not much different than anybody else's because there's kind of only way one way to dry brush um, so I, that is it for tonight guys I don't see any questions popping up in the comment section so I'm going to call it a uh, good night and the next time I'll be coming at you from my chaos corner. That is what this area is called, my chaos corner. On YouTube I am Pixie Dust and Chaos and after I post the videos, after we do the uh, live watch party on Facebook the videos will also be posted over on YouTube um, for for rewatching and for it to be found 
plus they will also be in our archives on our Facebook page. So there'll be two places where you'll be able to find the videos, whichever place is easier for you to find them. Alrighty, that is all I have for you. And until the next time, keep crafting.